Now it is your choice when you go out to a group or to a to an individual if you're presenting to as to which one you want to use. Since I've been doing this a while and that I feel so passionate about AFLAX cancel policy, I have always, as Bonnie will attest to, uh, sell the best plan because if somebody is diagnosed with cancer in the family or in your we were talking immediate family, you want to give them the very best plan possible. Now here at AFLAC, we certainly can't predict the future, but having a cancer policy does a couple of things. It lessens the worry, the financial worry, when one of your loved ones has been diagnosed with any kind of cancer. It also eases the emotion because most people will tell you if it's the husband, if it's the spouse, or if it's one of your dear children, you're going to be emotionally affected once a diagnosis is rendered. So I tell people, uh, you, a lot of people don't want to hear about even when you mention the word cancer, they shy away from it. They'll say, I don't need that. Uh, I don't want to jinx myself. But you have to impress upon people. It's not about jinxing yourself. It is about being prepared should you get a diagnosis of, some, of any kind of internal cancer. Now, a lot of people say, well, Ken, how does it work? And when I'm presenting this, this is exactly how I present it. First and foremost, with all of the plans, but if you go to the doctor, and I mean a regular doctor's, doctor's visit, you will be paid a wellness benefit. Now, as far as women is, are concerned, we're talking mammography, uh, pap tests, uh, colonoscopies, and for men, it's very similar. We have hemocult tests. We have the regular annual physical and also colonoscopy. But routine visits to your doctor means that you will be paid that wellness benefit every year. Now, a lot of people simply when you are presenting the plan will say, you know, so suppose I don't go to the doctor. Well, most people do go to the doctor, but the neat thing about the AFLAC's cancer policy is that money will stay there on your policy every year. It's there for you. All you have to do is present that form with the fact that you've gone to your doctor so that you can get that wellness benefit. And a lot of times people will say, well, uh, you mean to tell me after having a policy, which you have to have it for 30 days, I can, I'll, I'll be paid for doing something that I would normally do? And the answer is yes. Now let me tell you something that I say and it's a fact. When you have a cancer policy, one of the things that I learned early on is AFLAC does not split hairs. They really don't. They, they go out of their way to pay people. I had a gentleman whom I sold a cancer policy to and he had the policy for 27 days. And on the 27th day, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And he came to me and he said, Ken, he said, I just got this diagnosis. And he said, I haven't, my policy was effective uh, January 1st. And he said, you know, on the 27th here, I've been diagnosed. What, 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 does that mean that I don't get any money? I said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to submit that pathology report. And we're going to wait and see what AFLAC says. And what AFLAC said was initially, the policy hadn't been enforced for 30 days. So therefore, he did not have a legitimate claim. But here's what I do, what I did. I submitted a request to have it reviewed, or better known as an appeal. I appealed it to AFLAC, and guess what? He got paid. He was paid. And when I gave him, when I told him the news, he, he really didn't believe me. But here's what made him believe that I had got him paid when I gave him the check. <laughs> when I gave him that $10,000 check, he was overjoyed. 
So I, I, I tell people this so that people know that Aflac's cancer policy is something that everybody should have. And then one of the things that I have to have to say that when I'm talking about cancer plan, the cancer plan, I talk about how it has affected me and my family. Uh, I tell a story about my brother. Does anybody in here know what multiple myeloma is? Multiple, multiple myeloma is a bone cancer. My brother was diagnosed with, uh, I guess it's been about 10 years ago, with multiple myeloma. And he was in New York at the time, and, and I had told him all about Aflac, and I had refu actually refused <coughs> to sell him Aflac because I said, look, I'm not going to sell it to you because I'm your brother. I want you to get it. They haven't come to your job, and I do believe they will. And at that time, Aflac was, was doing a whole lot of things since he was in New York at the time. I said, listen, if they ever come to your job, get everything you can afford. And thank God he took my advice. Because a few years after that, he was rendered this diagnosis. And as a result of him having the Aflac cancer policy, the short-term disability, to this day, he still has money in his savings account as a result of having that policy. And he, thank God, with the prayers and everything, he has done fine. But <coughs> having this policy is is a no-brainer. And I tell people this is a true God set. It really is. One of the things, one of the other things that happens when you have the athletic cancer policy is that there are things that are covered in the policy that people don't even think about. Uh, there's a specified disease rider that, that, that's in the plan that covers all kinds of unexpected things. Um, we have uh, lupus, sickle cell anemia. Uh, there are a number of things that you wouldn't even think about uh, that is covered. There are ambulance benefits. If you have to be transferred from one place to another, uh, there's, there's a benefit for that. And on and on and on. And a lot of times people will, will, will call me and say, listen, uh, I have this diagnosis. What is it that I need to do? And one of the things that you have to remember is when you sell the policy, aside from people getting their wellness benefits, if they call you and tell you that, that they've been diagnosed or one of the kids has been diagnosed, the first thing you must do is you say, what I need you to do is go to your oncologist, get the pathology report, get that to me, and then we will start your claim. Because that pathology report has to be definitive in diagnosing whatever kind of cancer it is. And once that diagnosis is faxed in, the claim process starts. And you can, you can elect to have them get that check. What I do is I have the first, the initial payment sent to me. I like to deliver those checks personally because then you have the power to say, listen, I'm going to be here for you. Here's your first check going forward. This is what we need to do. And people will tell 10, 20, or as many people as they come in contact with what you did and what you are doing for them. Having this policy is so key and critical. It truly is. It is very important. One of the things that uh, you will find with Aflac's cancer policy is that people will again forget uh, when they should do certain things like with, with, the, uh, with the annual physical and, and going back and forth to the doctor doing things that they, that they, sh that they sh need to do. Uh, there's also when, when a person is, is in the hospital, there's a daily hospital benefit that is paid uh, for being in the hospital when you have or being treated for cancer. Uh, and that policy, you, you get that as long as you submit the documentation from your doctor or from the hospital because they want to see the hospital bill as to what you're being treated for. If you're getting um, internal, um, if you're getting uh, this, depending on what kind of medicine you're getting, 
will determine the kind of money you will get. Because some of the injectable kinds of medicines that are on the market now, there's like $900 a day for that treatment. And of course some are less, but it just depends on exactly what you're getting uh, chemo-wise as to how you'll be paid. But again, people find it very, very rewarding to have uh, the athletic cancer policy. I have a young lady who has been out six months with breast cancer, um, and she has called me several times saying, Ken, she said, I, I still don't believe you gave me a check for $17,000, and I'm getting anywhere from six, $700 a week uh, to date, and I've been out six months. So when you add that kind of money up, you can imagine what kind of financial impact this has on the psyche of a person, knowing that they're dealing with the with illness that they're going to get better from and still be in a better place financially than they were prior to going out. And it, it, it's just a wonderful thing to know that you can, can help people in this manner. You guys have any questions about, uh, about the cancer policy? Yeah. You ever talk about um, how it works in addition to disability and how the gaps in disability coverage, how great the cancer plan is for making up for those gaps? Well, a lot of times people will, will, will say, uh, will I be paid my short-term disability and will I also get money from the cancer policy? And the answer is yes, because as Meredith just pointed out, if you have a short-term disability and you are getting 500 a month or 1,000 a month, depending on what your, what your salary is, nine times out of 10, and in most instances, the money that you're getting from your cancer policy is gonna be a lot more than your short-term disability policy. And that is, that is just unbelievable because uh, the money is coming and it's not taxed. It's not taxed. Yes. Also, you've got that uh, increasing coverage rider that you can look up. I actually, I have the cancer policy and I've got the best one. Well, when you I talk about... I without it. But when you talk about increased in coverage, I'm going to say this, which is something that I probably should have talked about early on. Uh, when you have this premier policy or any uh, cancer policy and you have that initial five units of rider on it, here's what AFLAC does. After one year, the policy increases by $500 and it doesn't stop increasing until you reach your 65th birthday. So let's just say, and this, I had a question, somebody said, Hey, I'm 64, so you mean that I'm only going to get one year uh, 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 benefit for the one year. Aflac's policy is if you're 65, when you sell a policy to a, to a prospective client, they will still give them five years of building benefit. So if a person buys the policy at, at age 65 and at 70, God forbid, they're diagnosed with cancer, there's $2,500 plus the initial $6,000 that they get from the policy, which is the way it works. That is the way it works. So what AFLAC did, and I'm sure they did it for this reason, to incentivize people, and you must impress upon people when you sell the, the product, let them know that every year they keep the policy they are earning $500 should they need it if they are diagnosed or if they're one of their family members are diagnosed with internal cancer, which is a wonderful thing because that is, again, found money. And it's also, I, I tell people, which I believe the, the number is, we, we are paying, Meredith, correct me if I'm wrong, what, a, a million five, is that a, a day or a week? In, in claims. A day. A day? And when you, when you give out these kind of numbers and you tell people, they say, how can AFLAC afford to pay this kind of money? And it's easy because of the total number of payroll accounts we have, 
We are heavily involved in Japan. We are traded on the Tokyo Exchange, one of the few American companies that, that, that is traded on the Tokyo Exchange. And our loss ratio uh, is we, we pay out for every dollar we take in, we pay out about 70 cents. So we have the substantial glue to attach to what we do and how we do it. But one of the most important things that you must do, I feel as though you must do, is when you get in front of a group or you're talking to an individual person, disability is a, is a no-brainer. I follow right up with the cancer policy and I tell them why. And most people, most, will see it. You'll find, depending on how a person was raised and what they were told, and I say that to say this, you'll find that young people, for the most part, they don't want to hear unless they have been raised like I was raised in, with, with knowing that insurance is important. Because young people think that they are invincible, that nothing is ever going to happen, that life is just going to be fun and games, and I'm going to be able to bump along the road of life, and I'm going to be fine. But you tell them, and then you wait and see what happens. I had a situation where I was in front of a young woman, 26 years old. Some of you heard me say this. She bought everything that I had in, that, in the, in the AFLAC packet. And I said, why aren't you going to get the cancer policy? She said, Ken. She said, cancer doesn't exist on my, my mother's side. There's no cancer on my father's side. She said, I feel good knowing that I don't need that. Not a problem. Six months later, I see her name come up on my screen in my claims. Uh, and I looked and I said, oh my goodness, I wonder what happened. So I give her a call. First thing she says, you told me. I said, I told you what? She said, Ken. She said, I was in the shower and I felt a lump in my breast. I had no idea what it was. It was never there before. I went to my... My, my family care doctor, and then went, he sent me to, my onco to, to an oncologist to, 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 to get this thing looked at. And here it was a malignant tumor. She said, I'm 26 <coughs> years old. I said, I told you. She said, yes, you did tell me. So in that situation, she said, and I remember you saying, if you don't have the cancer policy, you got to go five years and be treatment free before you can get it again. She said, I'm marking my calendar. She said, I'm getting the policy. You know, once I am, once I am okay. But a lot of times, that old saying, "You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink," it happens. It happens. It happens every day. But all you can do is tell people, look at them, and tell them what the facts are. And if you look at them and you tell them, you hope they are listening. And most of them will. A lot of them won't. But people seem to come up with excuses as to why they should or shouldn't do something that they know they should do all the time, every day. Well, this, and then sometimes people will say, well, maybe I can not go to Wawa as much, or maybe I don't have to buy as many clothes, or, or whatever they spend their money on, and do something that's going to benefit them. And this is why we do what we do, because it's important. Aflac is a godsend and it has been wonderful a wonderful way for me to transition from my last job to what I'm doing now we can you can truly not we but you can truly live the dream and I am so proud that I made the decision to go with sister hook <laughs> <laughs> thank you me too it was a great decision <laughs> Even yes. if you were kicking and screaming. <laughs> yes, sir. You're using the term internal cancer. Is that, are you deliberately excluding? I say cancer? internal cancer. Yes, that's a skin cancer benefit. But the skin cancer benefit is, is, is minuscule compared to what we pay out for internal cancer. Okay. Yeah, so we have ba basal cell. It, it, basal cell cancer is so common. Mm -hmm. It's very common. It happens a lot. Yeah, Mike Schmidt. Yes. <laughs> but here's what... Speaking of that, I'm glad you mentioned that. I had a, had a gentleman who said to me, he said, you know what, I'm going to, everybody here at, at, 
at, at, at MediQuip is saying how great this cancer policy is. And it'll just be my luck to get this policy and not get paid. And years ago he had had a problem with, with a basal cell cancer on his nose. And I guess probably about a year, half, a year to two years into his policy, that basal cell cancer went and, and developed inside his nose. And so he said, I will, he said, can he said, I'm mark, mark my word, I will be willing to bet you that I am the, I will be the one that won't get paid. I probably won't get paid because this started outside, now it's inside. About a month later, he got a check. And he told everybody in his neighborhood, everybody, how happy he was. Not that he was diagnosed with cancer, but he felt as though I broke the street for him not getting what he felt as though he should get when things happen. And that's the way it was. Isn't a cancer claim one that can also be sold individually, not mm -hmm. as part of the group? Sure, yeah. sure. You can you can sell it individually, and the, and the individual sales of cancer, as long as the person has a credit card or a savings or a checking account, they can get the policy on a direct basis. It's the next difference. The next difference, yeah. Different the policy, policy then, then you know. It's not. Yeah. Right. Yes? Ken, do you still handle all your claims yourself with all the business that you have coming in? How do you manage to do that? You know, I never thought that I would be able to, to, to do this, but I feel so... Now, listen to this. It was almost like a Wendy story. I didn't want to do claims. Like, a lot of agents, when you come in, claims are a pain in the neck. I didn't really want to do claims. Right. But what I realized is when I did claims, it made me... It gave me additional information about the, about the products that I was selling. And when I delivered checks to people... Looking at a person's face, looking at a, at, a, at, a, at men who broke broke out in tears, saying, "Oh my God, that is powerful, and it's a good feeling. It is a great feeling to do those claims for me." Now everybody does their claims their own way, and of course, a lot of the districts can't afford to do it because. They're doing so many other things, but I do my claims, yes, I still do them. And even when I'm on vacation, my wife is saying, why are you on that phone? Why didn't you leave? I said, listen, if somebody calls and if it's something important, I got want to take care of or at least tell them what, I, what they need to do until I get back. But mm -hmm. claims is something that I look forward to because claims is why you sell the policy. You sell the policy telling people that if you have a claim, we're going to pay you. And if they have a claim, if you don't help them get paid, they feel like, wait a minute, man, when I bought this, it wasn't a problem, but now that I'm calling you, I can't, I can't get you on the phone, you don't really want to help me. That's the way I look at it. Now, you can, you can look at it however you choose or however it benefits you to continue on with your, with your, with your business uh, and your livelihood. But claims are a big thing, and I get personally involved in, in most of my claims. Yes? <laughs> How do you get the checks to come to you? Because I checked off that, that option well, on, the, on the cover sheet, and question. it has never happened. <laughs> Here's what happened. When you check that box off, <coughs> yeah. when they're doing those claims, a lot of times they don't look at, at the box. Okay. So when you send the claim in, what, what I do is... I call the claims department and I say, listen, I want, I want to make sure that it's noted that when the auditor is getting ready to pay this claim, I want you guys to know that that, that initial check comes to me. And usually when you do that early <coughs> on, there isn't a problem because they have so many claims, as you know, yeah. until they easily skip that part, the auditors, when they are right before they assign that check to be sent out. So if you don't call them a lot of times and, and remind them, please, you know, send me that first check. It goes directly to the claimant. You can also take a sharpie and write in really big block letters on the front, like in the comment area or something. Uh -huh. Like yeah, it's not foolproof, but it'll help. 
<laughs> well, that, Meredith, Meredith, that's that's what I do on my on my uh, cancer claims when I send that initial uh, pathology report in. I write in there on in large letters, please send first check to agent. And usually they see that because it's it's in it's in bold. But uh, it, it helps a lot. Is there another question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm just starting out, and you're absolutely right. Went to a like a worm call, and a lady came right in and told that her uh, her niece had breast cancer, worked in a beauty salon in Florida. And she got paid ten grand. She just brought it right up. So those stories get bounced off. It's a shame they just have to kind of uncover them, and it, it, it comes down. Another question I have: At the end of the day, what age groups are buying these? Guys? At the end of the day, who's signing for these? Age well, you you said something about a hairdresser, right? Right. I had, I do a lot of hairdressers. Hairdressers, I impress, <coughs> I impress upon them. I impress upon them. As soon as I sell me the disability, I go right for the cancer. And here's what helps sell the cancer policy for me. The wellness benefit. Because a lot of those uh, hairdressers are married. A lot of them have children. A lot of them have teenage daughters. And when they find out that they're going to get a wellness benefit for that 17, 18-year-old that's going to the gynecologist, it's a good thing. And when you go back to do your open enrollments and to check to see if there's new people, when you walk in and say, listen, uh, who, do, who do we owe money to? Do I owe you money? Uh, let, let's first of all find out if, 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 I can, if I can write you, if, if I can give out some checks. People listen. Because when other people are getting paid, like last week, I had, I guess it was last Thursday, I was up in Dawnstown. Just one uh, young hairdresser had $600 in wellness benefits. The other girl said, how are you getting $600? Hey, talk to the duck. <laughs> Get some duck money. You know, and we make it a, make it, you know, a, a, a joke, but it helps people get the message and they have something that they need, should they need it. So get one, at least if you get one on the cancer get one. group, just get one. Get one. Because nine times out of ten, when you start out, and many of you are new, claims will drive your business. Right, Meredith? Yes. Oh, huge. <laughs> Good work. Claims will drive your business. Claims handle quickly. Do you ever use statistics, like uh, the percentage of people that get cancer or anything else that you well, have? Well, statistically, when you, when you talk about stats, one in over over a life to over one's lifetime, one in two men will be diagnosed with cancer. One in three women will have a diagnosis of cancer. And this is this this these are the stats. This is just the way it shakes out. Well, just watch your T V. There's a cancer center opening up almost every uh, corner. Okay? There's so much competition. Well, geez, don't you think it's like cancer is pretty prevalent? There, well, all these places to open up. There's so much talk about cancer. Uh, there was I can remember times when you would go into a place of business, and there would be a jar, a box on 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 the counter. Mm -hmm. Somebody that were, that was working there was diagnosed with some kind of cancer, or, or some new form, not new form, but rare kinds of cancer. I mean, it certainly happens. Uh, I had a gentleman up in uh, Montgomery County who 